Let's bring in our panel back. Carl Rove, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff. Molly Hemingway, Editor-in-Chief of The Federalist. And Guy Benson, host of The Guy Benson Show. All again, Fox News contributors. All right, Carl, your reaction to what the president laid out there. Well, it was emotional and it was passionate. A couple of things that we need to correct. The evidence does not show that the 1994 assault weapons ban had a significant, uh, statistically significant decline in those kind of incidents for the 10 years it was on the books. And similarly, when it was allowed to lapse in 2004 for the next decade, there was a statistically insignificant change uh, after the law disappeared. So he, he, mis he misstated that. Uh, look, red flag laws might work, but remember, New York had a red flag law and a disturbed individual went to Buffalo and killed people uh, despite that. So I'm, I'm in favor of them, but let's, let's consider them, but let's, let's be careful of saying we got to do something and expect these kind of things to just magically disappear. Uh, you know, he, he talked at, at, at length about uh, how we need to get rid of the liability protection for gun manufacturers. What he really wants to say there is we want to, we want to gut the gun uh, uh, manufacturing industry of the United States. Imagine what we would do if we say if, you, if, you, if you're injured or killed in a car crash, you can go sue the company that made the car. That, you know, that, 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 that is clearly, it shows where he's really coming from, which is an antipathy towards guns and the Second Amendment rights. And, and some of this is simply unworkable. There are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of, of, of magazines out there that you can put 30 bullets in or 10 bullets in or 20 bullets in. How are you going to basically get, you know, how are you going to deal with that? How, are you going to criminalize possession uh, of that and somehow send the police in to, to grab every large capacity magazine that's sitting in somebody's, uh, somebody's storage cabinet? Um, and, and the ending, I thought, while powerful, and he, when he talked about his prayer, the part just before that in which he took a two-by-four to Republicans yeah. was not helpful to actually getting something done. Guys, some of the things he did not mention, uh, gang warfare with handguns in the inner city, also nothing about hardening schools. What did you make of the president's address? Yeah, if we want to talk about common sense, one of the pieces needs to be protecting schools with trained, armed guards and security. That's not a perfect solution, but nothing is. Look, Jesse, I think that the president there channeled a lot of the horror and gut-wrenching pain that many Americans have felt across the political spectrum in these last few weeks. No one likes to see what's happening. His anecdote that Carl mentioned at the end, talking about the grandmother who slipped a note to him saying, please erase these divides in our country. That's a wonderful sentiment. It's the type of sentiment, actually, that helped Joe Biden get elected. But it's undercut dramatically by his attempts at shaming Republicans in that speech and making this, at times, into something of a political voting, electoral call for action. Those things don't really coexist very well, and I think he did not help the chances of something actually happening in the Senate very much with his speech tonight, unsurprisingly. Molly, do you agree with that? Do you think he hurt his chances with Senate Republicans and Senate Democrats getting a gun deal together? He showed that this was, for him, a partisan political approach. Uh, do something is not a serious policy, but the actual policies that he listed are extremely troubling. I think it's comforting for simple-minded people to think that restricting the natural right to keep and bear arms would solve all of our problems, that destroying the Constitution would solve our problems. That is not true, and we have a natural right of self-defense and to guard against tyranny in the Second Amendment. This is something that makes us American. And Joe Biden showed that he does not respect the Constitution. He does not support this natural right. That really is an impeachable offense to talk this way against something so foundational to the country. Um, but it was also just really divisive and unhelpful for him. And I think, you know, he helped people see what really is at play here. Very little of what he's uh, talking about would actually prevent some of these horrible mass shootings. Um, he kind of gave away the game when earlier this weekend he talked about getting rid of uh, making it illegal to have uh, handguns. This is a really extreme agenda, and he is misguided if he thinks this is going to be a political winner for him. I know they're desperate 
but this is not going to sell well in this country. Yeah, we discussed that on the five this afternoon, Carl, the trust factor. If he's just going to casually throw in there, oh, nine millimeters, I mean, that's the most popular handgun in the country. I mean, not only he wants to strip away the most popular rifle, the AR-15, he just casually says, oh, yeah, the, the nine millimeter handgun, too, that's got to go. Like, how, how are any Republicans going to deal in good faith with this man? Well, they've got to attempt to deal with good, in good faith to try and arrive at things that actually may make a difference. And they're fortunate in the Senate to be led by John Cornyn. Following the Sutherland Springs uh, massacre, there were, there were some uh, problems with the database. The, 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 the shooter there had been uh, tossed out of the military, and the military failed to, to uh, give that information to the national database that would have kept him from buying a weapon. And John Cornyn led an effort, Republicans and Democrats, to fix that uh, issue and, and to make other improvements in, in the background checks and database. So he's got somebody on the Republican side who is willing to sit down and make reasonable and sensible improvements, but he's never going to go for something as nutty as what the, what the president was alluding to today. Everything from, you know, removing the, you know, allowing you to sue the gun manufacturer if somebody uses their gun to, you know, all kinds of other things that simply are not going to go anywhere in the United States Senate and, uh, and, and are just a political gesture on the part of the president. Where is the common ground here, Guy? Where is it? Is it red flag laws? Because I've laid out a yes. red flag law plan. Is it, is it background checks? Is it, is it the mental health component? What is it? Mental health, probably. Uh, red flag laws, for sure. There are some red states that have enacted red flag laws. Florida has a pretty good one that was put into place after Parkland. I think that other states can look at that. I think it's better served at the state level. That's an area for common ground. So should some reasonable protections at schools. That should be on the table at least. Was not mentioned, as you pointed out, at all from the president tonight. It might seem like small ball to some people, but that's what's realistic. And I think if the president had wanted to actually move the process forward, he would have said very little, if nothing at all tonight, except for, I'm hoping that the bipartisan group in the Senate gets their work done, and I look forward to seeing what they offer. That would be constructive. I understand the desire to emote. We're all emotional. But the question is, are we going to really have enough and try to get something done? And if that's the president's true aim, true intention, a big speech tonight, while politically tempting, I don't think is the ticket. But he's worried about his base, Molly. He's losing his base. They're angry with him. He hasn't gotten anything really done legislatively. So he needs to go hard after the AR. Isn't that what this is about? Well, the, he, the base is the only group that has been served well by the Biden administration since it began. All of his policies seem to be appealing to them. Unfortunately, there's not much and disagreement still mad. In, the, in the Democratic caucus itself. They all support what he's working on. But I do want to say, I think too often people accept the framing put forth by corporate media and other Democrats that this issue that we're dealing with is a gun issue mm -hmm. in the same way that we just talked about if a car is used to commit violence you don't blame the car we really do have a problem in this country we are raising children who seem to have uh, lost their moral compass or never had it to begin with and we need to be talking about things that actually deal with that whether it's fatherless homes drug use mental illness and other things and a serious nation would talk about this yeah things. i mean hillary clinton said herself it takes a village right molly thank you guys very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.